Hello, my name is Dougal Teams. I am a Postgres DevOps engineer with ADB. And I welcome you to this video about integrating ADB Ansible and ADB Postgres with Ansible Tower. ADB Postgres deployment is an open source Ansible GitHub tool. It is available, of course, on a GitHub. And the whole purpose of this tool is to help you and streamline the provisioning of your Postgres clusters in the three major cloud vendors, those being AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. EDB Ansible is the other open source tool that allows you to configure these provisioned clusters, Postgres clusters. An Ansible Tower acts as a graphical user interface and as a hub so that you can manage all these jobs at the same time. Whenever you provision a Postgres cluster environment with our Postgres deployment tool, it takes around 20 or 30 minutes, depending on the reference architecture and your cloud vendor. Feel free to look up your, our reference architectures on our website on enterpriseDB.com. Before delving into deeper parts of the video, let's first take a look at Ansible Tower, a quick overview of it. As we already know, it belongs to Red Hat. They are the authors of it. But the major feature we are interested in are what really help us move around Ansible Tower. It has a graphical user interface. It is also accessible programmatically, meaning through APIs and the CLI. But most importantly, you can use playbooks across and save all these tasks so that you can replay them, reuse them, schedule them down the road as well. Ansible Tower comes in two editions, standard and premium. The differences are that, of course, the premium is paid and you get 24 seven support. With a better understanding of what Ansible Tower is, we can take a deeper dive into what the components are. Starting from the left hand side, we can see that the cloud vendor would be the figure that contains all of our infrastructure, the Postgres infrastructure. Moving to the right, we see the templates. The templates, we can think of them as a logical container in which a template would contain the inventories, the credentials, the projects that can be two types, either manual or, or the GUI project. And within themselves, credentials divide themselves into two types of credentials. The keys, which are used most across all of the clouds in one way or another, and our credentials to log in into each cloud. The manual project means we have to assemble a manual project via the command line. All the components, files, as you can see here, are broken into collections, plugins, and the playbook. And the usual project is the one you use associated in the GUI. In the GUI, we would associate the manual project into the visual project. The inventory as well, that is not very much confusing at all because we're using a GitHub template that we start from indicating the IP addresses of those cloud VMs that we're utilizing here. The steps that lead to a complete Ansible Tower integration with EDB Postgres deployment and EDB Ansible are listed here, starting with provisioning, credentials, projects, inventories, a template launch, finding the credentials in our Ansible Tower template logs, and finalizing with the destruction of our cloud resources. As our first step, you can see that we have already configured in Google Cloud an infrastructure named MNC1 of CentOS 8 with reference architecture 1, EPAS, and US West 2, a Postgres version 13. It was all done successfully. Since our EDB Postgres deployment tool has indicated that our Postgres infrastructure has been created successfully, let's navigate to the Google Cloud Console. Let's head into the compute section to be more precise. Once in there, and then once it loads in our screen, we should see three virtual machines, prefixed with the name MNC1, as you can see there, completely named and reassuring us that our infrastructure is readily available for us to configure. Time to click on the left-hand navigation for credentials, followed by adding a credential with a plus sign. Type in the name, choose our organization by default, our credential type, which of course is the first type of the Google Compute Engine, select it, and we're going to choose our file. It's going to be our JSON file used for Google Cloud. Once we have that, we can save that one and proceed to the next type of credential. The same process. We click on the plus sign, enter the name of the credential, select it for the organization by default, the type, which in this case, as you can see, we're going to use a drop down to save some time, machine type. Our RSA file we have to select along with our username. 
And once they're both selected and saved, we click Save. That should take care of our credentials. Let's go ahead and click on the project link at the left tab navigation of Enhancing Tower. And let's type in our name for the project, the type of the URL, the update option, and save it. And once that's saved, we have to head up into the next project that we have to define. We click again and add the plus sign, once more, enter the name, we type the URL and the update option and click on save. Notice that we are waiting for it to sync and update there. We can wait for a little while, or the other option is to just click on the project link itself, which will take us to the logs, as you can see. Here we can see what is happening and keep track of what steps are occurring in the background. The log has concluded. To click on the inventories link on the left hand navigation, click on the right and plus sign, enter the inventory name, after the VMs, choose our Google Compute Engine, save button, and look at the sources. We can start sync process, see it's blinking. We can also click on the logs on the project link itself, go back, look it's already synced. Start the next one, we host, save it, choose our sources, and see that we can enter the source house, host file. We enter it, we choose it from the project where it's coming from, and then we'll choose the file from the drop down. Next step is set up the update options. Important, save those options for the project itself, the inventory. Force it to sync. As always, we can click on the link for the source host file to see the options that are happening. You can see them there. And then we go to the host file. Go to the host to see the sources. As you can see, they have synced. The time has come for us to create our manual project template here. So we have created a directory within our terminal here, specify location. We're going to copy all the components and the series in here, such as collections, playbooks, and plugins. Once that's done, we have to create the template itself. Name it, choose organization, the type, and other values, such as the playbook directory, and then click the save button. It's being added, as you notice here in the bottom. We click on the project template again, just to navigate away, and then we go back into the templates. We choose a job template, set the name, the type, the inventory. You can have multiple of these projects, division, or playbook, or credentials, which we will have to choose two types, the cloud one and the machine types. Once we have there created, we're going to set the playbook parameters and the template parameters. We click and save. That is available here. We can find the credentials by navigating to our Ansible Tower URL. We log in with our credentials. Once we are signed in, we navigate to the jobs. We're going to click on the job that we are interested in getting the credentials from. In this case, we're going to export the log to a text file, just because it's easier to search within it. And we're going to start doing control F for find. We're going to look for Enterprise DB and the pass, and we have we still have one more to find, pen admin. And there it is. That's how you retrieve the credentials from your logs. We are already seeing in the background that the destruction process has begun. We are now located, navigated to our mobile console, verifying that destruction is ongoing. Our first VM is in the process of being destructed, and others are ongoing. We keep on refreshing just to see what is happening in the background, but we can see that two more are in the process of being destroyed. Just because they are being destroyed, as we can see in the Google Cloud Console, does not mean that entire resources, as we can see in the terminal, are destroyed. We have to give it a little bit more time. Once this process completes, as we can see, we can confirm everything has been destroyed. While many would indicate that the key takeaway from integrating Ansible Tower 
with EDB Ansible is the ability to have a user interface, which it's hard to argue against. There are many other reasons to take into account, such as the security of your Postgres cluster, which is high in the number list there, best practices already baked into your deployment, and last but not least, there's very little customization needed for this integration. The resources utilized throughout this video are Red Hat Ansible, which as you can see are listed here as part of the links, EDB tools, among those EDB Postgres deployment, EDB Ansible, both being open source, and last but not least, the Ansible Tower GitHub template repository. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, as always. Thank you for watching Accelerate PostgreSQL deployments with Ansible Tower. See you in the next video.